Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another episode of Challenging the Status Quo podcast. Today with me, my guest, Darko Marish, a professional photographer who came from audio industry and went through a journey, which he's going to tell us about, um, and became a professional photographer. Darko, welcome. Awesome to have you on the show. Hi, Amir. Thank you so much for inviting me and uh, letting me talk about my story. Uh, so, uh, um, like you said, uh, audio engineering was uh, first my love, let's say this way, and uh, this is what I educated myself for, but uh, in terms of education, I knew already that it wouldn't were going to be my job, so I went to the IT industry for about 20 years, and after that, uh, from hobby, what? First was only hobby photography, it now became my job. I have professional photographer, headshot and business portraits. Uh, and and recently I joined one of your conversation because it's not a job, you're working for yourself, right? So you're a solopreneur in that. Yes. Yeah, so, right? uh, well, it depends how you see it. Uh, I'm still at the stage where I can say I created myself a job, so as a so, as much as I am solopreneur, it's, it's still a job, but I'm tending to make it more as a business, uh, not to be as a uh, only one who's working here. Oh, okay. Okay. But are you working solely only photography or are you doing other things to earn a living? Uh, photography. So photography. it's 100% photography. Do you charge in hours or packages or services or products? Uh, well, I charge by the photo, so it's not oh, by well. hour, it's by single photograph, basically. That, that's really... I do have packages, but basically these are only a um, number of photographs that are included in some package. And do you have gigs, like you travel and do stuff, you know, somebody invites you to an event that is incidentally something, etc.? Uh, yes, I do also that. I uh, I work here basically in studio, uh, as a studio photographer, but uh, it's no problem uh, for me to travel to some uh, client's uh, office or wherever they need their photographs taken, so also uh, portraits directly in their ambient. Uh, but uh, I have a service uh, to provide uh, on uh, events uh, that I cr uh, take photographs, headshots of people directly on the event. So it's basically I create a kind of a mini studio where people that are on event come to me and have their photo taken. So you are a solopreneur, only you're being, being modest. The difference between uh, what in my eyes, right? So the difference the twins be, between a job and being a solopreneur is the fact that you're not bound by time, space, working hours or not. So it, you have a level That's playing true. field. So if somebody says, "Well, I need a mugshot with a drone," uh, can you do that for me? I'm convinced that you're going to say, well, I never done that before, but I'm going to think about it. What is the market for this? And you're going to evolve doing it. Accidentally. Yes, I'm probably going to find some colleague who's going to do it uh, for me via my company. Yeah, something like yeah. that. So, yeah. so, so, so you're not bound to a place like exchanging your time for a salary? Uh, in that terms, no, not that much. So... So you're yeah. being okay. Modest. If you if you say this, okay, I, it's not a modest. job. I'm a solopreneur. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it sounds much better, right? It sounds much better. <laughs> it sounds much better, but it still feels the same way. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it still feels the same way. Uh, it's still a job. Uh, in terms, I cannot just uh, go somewhere for two months, not be here, and expect that uh, things will still be the same and somebody will just miraculously send me the money. So well, that can happen I need to work. Job. That, is, that, is, that can happen if you have a job, right? <laughs> uh, yes, and 
at, at this moment, at this phase of my solopreneurship, I am still having a job in these terms. Yeah, I need yeah. to be here and work. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it, but it's, but, but you, it's it's by your own choosing, which is which is of course something that is very. Yes, I I don't need to ask anybody. Okay, may I take a vacation today? Or I'm not feeling that good. So uh, maybe I'll need to ask client if we have agreement. Okay, I need to be there tomorrow. Uh, can somebody else come instead of me? But uh, yeah, I can choose when and where I want to work. Yeah. So that's uh, that's the beauty of it. I would say that you are your own judge, uh, jury, and executioner. So everything lays in your hands. Also, your success. Exactly. And and was this always your desire, hidden desire to start this? How this? How did this? Can you tell us about your journey? What happened? Well, it didn't. It wasn't really always my desire regarding the photography. At least uh, I wanted to create something my own. Uh, even when I was working for somebody else, so I had. Um, additional um, company uh, to uh, additional job, let's say, by myself. Uh, first, uh, it was when I was still in IT uh, that much. It was uh, I was uh, creating some uh, wireless networks and uh, things like this. Uh, and uh, photography was only my hobby that uh, wasn't connected to any money. Later, well... I don't know. If you work that long in the IT, you, things move fast here. And at least uh, I have gotten bored of everything, just to, uh, changing completely every couple of years. So uh, photography and uh, more of that uh, that I needed to interact with people and not that much with computers started to be uh, more liked by me so uh, i like this part uh, more than uh, the it and uh, the idea came that i could just uh, start my business with photography only and, and you just recently had a live meeting which i joined shortly because i needed to run and it was about about i started but i didn't think about number of things that actually were necessary uh well, when you start, right? You didn't think about it. What are the things that you wish you knew uh, when you started, when you were heading out? Uh, what are all the things <laughs> that I wish I knew? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> when you start your own business, you, you for certain don't know uh, what uh, everything is. At least here in the uh, Balkan area, let's say this way, bureaucracy is really... A strong part of every business so you don't expect that you need so many paper so much paperwork but um, when you try to create something from your hobby you think you're going to do what you like mostly and it ends up you need to have time for accounting you need to have time for marketing uh, for, for sales at least for uh, people to pay you something uh, to come and uh, pay you for uh, what you work so these are the things that you didn't um, that I at least didn't expect uh, that I would need I would need to have so much time for so it's not that much that I do photographing but all these other things that are connected to the business okay, so so actually missing papers at the municipality and missing people first at the chamber of commerce where was that was the challenge and equipment? Yes. Uh, well, equipment, not that much, because uh, if you create your business from hobby, then you already have some equipment, and it's uh, more or less when you start, you already have it, so you don't need to purchase any new equipment, at least not all of it. So it wasn't that much. If you are creating something from scratch, of course, then you need to have some new equipment but let's say i had uh, photography as a hobby for at least 15 years prior to creating a business from it and there is much uh, equipment there is uh, too much equipment perhaps that i accumulated over the years what is the what is the most 
or the biggest, because I see you talking a lot about why, what is the importance of photography? What is the importance of a, importance of a good photograph on your LinkedIn or, uh, uh, can you, can you tell about that? What is the, what, what do you see missing and where do people go wrong? Why should they invest in a photograph? Uh, all as a business photographer and headshot photographer is what I see mostly is uh, that people think that their photograph on the website or on LinkedIn, their business photograph is only there to show how they look like. Partly it is so, but it is more to show their character and to at least create uh, some interest for other side who is looking at that photo for the first contact. So like with everything, you cannot uh, be likable by everybody. So this is also a good filter. If somebody doesn't uh, look, uh, doesn't like how you look uh, on the photo, uh, it is a good chance that you won't get along already uh, directly when conversations. So the photograph online and today every first contact is basically online is a good thing to start as a first impression that you can show yourself who you are, who you want to have business with and what, uh, what your character actually is. That's, that's interesting. So, so I, I have, I have one for you. So do open LinkedIn and judge my, judge my, uh, a LinkedIn photo. I just want to hear what, what your conclusion would be based on a photo. Oh, okay. Also for, our, for also I, I our, need to look at it now. Of course, of course, of course, but on the spot. <laughs> well, well, I, you didn't tell me that I need to prepare for this. Okay. I have to, I have to, I have to surprise you. I am. To surprise okay. You. Uh, okay. So basically on what I can see, uh, there is actually a bit of a difference here from what I can see from our conversation and directly here from, uh, this photo here, you seem to be more closed, um, more introspective and not uh, wanting to talk with others. So. When somebody who is very conversational and wants to talk with people, I don't think that you would be the first choice for them. Yeah. <laughs> when, when you look at your own photo, do, do you feel the same way now? No, but that's, but this is an interesting, interesting point. So I don't want to talk to them. I will tell you why. Oh, you, you don't want to talk. Well, well, well to it doesn't to seem like this now, but <laughs> I want to make my own choosing who I talk to. I will, I will tell you the LinkedIn. Okay. And what is this for LinkedIn? Why why this is the close is because I used to, I also changed a lot of titles. And the fact for that is that because I got crowded with all these messages of people trying to say, sell and not trying to sell, but is it, we in all in all our life we're trying to sell something, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's in business and they want to as you you know if you were. If you were in, in, in the Netherlands right now, I would probably say, hey, Darko, come over. Let's take some good shots so I can have it on my website and et cetera. Why? Because I, I you know, you're a likable guy. So let's, let's do business. It's, it's about, well, but it's not only about selling in business. No, uh, no, well, I, it's, it's like the bill. I, I walk my dog in the morning and I sell him how the, she, the dog should uh, walk. So it is also part of a selling process to, uh, to find a way to have them dance how you like, let's say no, this way. It's, it, it's about, it's about, um, do I like the person that I'm talking with? Uh, is he interested in what I did in my life? Am I thinking I'm a genuine, genuine connection? Do you have a genuine connection or is this like, Hey, uh, how are you doing? And then would you like to buy this? Okay. So, yes. so. Well, yeah, LinkedIn yeah, yeah, is yeah, all about yes, not even course. asking how are you doing, but hey, would you like to buy this? Would you like to buy it? Would you like to buy this? <laughs> would you like to buy this? But look, I mean, they don't even bother to look you up, research you, uh, look what your background is, and then start a conversation and saying, hey, how are you doing? I see that you have done a lot in XYZ. Uh, I defer in this way. 
you know, like like starting a conversation. Because if you take time to step back from this AI generated automation messages, maybe another time you send a message, a person will react and say, "Hey, what's up? Thank you for reaching out." and start a conversation. So we talked about this. I mean, in the in the lines of other things, I even send you a, a, a video with uh, the the mic in my beard because you did. Um, <laughs> it's about authenticity. It's about being yourself. And um, and I don't. I want people that reach out through LinkedIn that they do some work before they reach. So this is yes, why okay. my closeness is there. In this best of course, thing. but I I'd say the part of it is also their profile picture because uh, okay I I have no problem in uh, being approached and then approached and talking with people uh, but uh, let's say you want to reach out to somebody and the only thing they see is your profile and your profile picture. And it doesn't look like really welcoming guy. Okay, do not want to talk with this guy or it's not? A fight. <laughs> uh, okay, maybe not. Uh, I'll just uh, remove the connection request and next. So this is also, it's not only that your photograph should be that inviting to other people, but also to show your personality, how you really are. And I cannot see that from this picture. And I can, for certainly, after we talked about uh, after we talked at least a couple of minutes already, I can see it doesn't reflect the reality. So the profile picture should actually, or any business photo or any photo should actually uh, reflect uh, the reality and uh, your character. Thank you very much. I didn't think about that aspect. I only think about the introspect and about myself. I didn't think about how this affects my So, so thank you very much for the feedback. Um, and um, are people, uh, of course, you have a business around it. Uh, so, so I suppose that there are a lot of people that wants to have this uh, uh, business photography, et cetera, et cetera. Do you mm -hmm. see this rising or taking off with the, the coming of? How are you using? Because you sell, said, well, you like conversation, you like people. So actually, it's about the human part of the job, I would say, that uh, the fulfills you as a, as, a, as a person and then you do photography next to it. Um, yes. Um, how do you see this development with uh, the enhancements and the uh, generation tools and so on? So there are a lot of technologies coming up that can generate audio, video, enhance and etc. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you see this impacting your profession and where are we going to uh, well, I'd say it's a normal process with the AI and everything because when you look at the history, uh, people always wanted to look their best. And even if you see uh, portraits of uh, uh, some emperors or wh whoever was able to um, use uh, some artist to at least paint them or make a sculpture of them. You see, they wanted it to be grandiose and uh, that uh, all the flaws should just disappear. So I'd say it's in human nature to be so. AI just is another tool that makes it even uh, makes you look better on photographs, on video, on audio. So it's in human nature that they should, uh, they could, uh, now everybody has the power to use it themselves. Uh, depending how you use it, you might overdo it and uh, look unnatural to other people. In terms, okay, they first see you via photograph, via video, and uh, in business terms, they are probably going to meet you sooner or later in real life. And if this doesn't reflect how you presented yourself in the photograph, uh, it is going to... Uh, it will lower your before. credibility. It will roll yeah, your yeah. credibility because there is a difference between what's online and what's the reality. Yeah, and this disalignment will just... Uh, um, just uh, this credibility will disappear of it, uh, out of it, and they will not trust you anymore. Because 
if you present yourself differently in photo and in real life you look different and you have different character, people will even unconsciously think, okay, what else is this person hiding from me in business aspect? If they are presenting themselves different from the start, yeah. what can I expect when we start really working together? The, the hidden treasure or hidden disasters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so the trust is uh, no more there. So oh, this is the problem. If you present yourself differently than you, who you really are. Of course, but this is, this again, we come back to the authenticity and being yourself and who you tr truly are and accepting, first of all, accepting yourself as you are and then doing the things of the world. Exactly. Uh, we, we need to accept ourselves as uh, who we really are and love ourselves for that, that we are unique and everyone has a different specialty and some positive things that will also uh, be a positive thing for others and not uh, see all our negativities because basically um, most of us just even all of us just think for ourselves when we're in business environment what can this person do for me and you don't look that much for uh, the negative side regarding the looks or everything do i even care if i have a pimple here uh, if you have a pimple there no i don't care i just uh, want uh, to know how you can help me yeah i think but it's it's uh, that we will come to back to the authenticity but also with the genuine connection i think there's and i there, there is science uh, behind this uh it's about the emotional connection that you have with people so if you share emotional touch points from your past where you can identify yourself in another person or vice versa. There is where the trust is built. Um, yes. And uh, yes. you're saying, hey, uh, I, I can converse with this person and they relate to a lot of things that I have experienced. And then based on that, you, you start building a relationship. Um, uh, the, the, the thing is that we live in a kind of superficial or shallow world now, driven by dopamine and adrenaline where we do not take time to get to know another person. We're just like driving and driving. We just want to fast results. Everything has to be fast. You know, mm -hmm. you got to take time. We just talked about it, having your coffee in that uh, uh, um, uh, pace that it gets cold it, while you're still <laughs> drinking it. You know, take, take your time to do things. And I think also you, build a relationship. You need to enjoy yourself. All you need to enjoy yourself, but also, so, so it's also enjoying a conversation with somebody. It's not like let's he's, let's talk, but uh, let's sell. Uh, come on, make it easy. Yeah, of course. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Darko, what is your biggest challenge at the point? Uh, my biggest challenge. You you mean in business or? What is your biggest challenge? <laughs> you're you're, uh, you're a solopreneur, so you're. Personal, uh, you don't have a personal life. <laughs> I know that's so true. Just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. Okay, Thank it's you. Sunday today. Thank you. you. Want to talk about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, just uh, let's stick to the business part. Uh, well, for photography part, uh, I'd say uh, there is difference between the. Western world, and at least here in Balkans where I work, uh, is that uh, there is not that much um, that people understand the importance of photography. And when I meet uh, other people from the Western countries or from US, uh, it's a no, no brainer for them that they need pro professional photograph taken for them for their website for the business or for LinkedIn. Here, it's not that much, uh, really, that uh, people understand in this way. So it's a challenge for me to at least educate them that it does make sense and it will just bring them forward because they also have a great picture. So, so you're educating them. So it's actually education. I'm trying to. For an image. Right? Yes. On image importance. Of course. Of course, of course. Well, you know, it's, uh, the, the, the bulk and good looks are, of course, you know, number one priority of most people. Yeah, but, but it's not about the good looks. 
This is the part. It's about all authenticity. Capturing the good look. And if you go <laughs> to the good looks part, you will have a false image about yourself. So, oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's a that's a really nice one. Hey, um, if I would give you a possibility to die, to spend the whole day, not die, it's very short period. One person in the whole history of existence, who would that be? You can spend a day with one person. A day with with one person. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, who oh, would? Uh, okay, th th this is now completely uh, uh, locally related, uh, but probably with Tito. So he he was a big person, and what he did was uh, quite remarkable in were uh, the whole world terms. Uh, however, there also there were also negative things, but uh, I think he was a really interesting person. I still I lived when he was alive, so this might also uh, be connected to that. You're, a, you're. A, I think that I'm the, um, the last, the last uh, class of pioneers. That was no, uh, yeah, you were. Okay, because I, was I also was only the pioneer. I didn't go to hire whatever they were called, but yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, so, I, I think the '89 was the the last. 89 or I think 89 was the last. Oh, okay. To my experience, of course, to my knowledge. But then again, maybe 90 was built somewhere, but I don't think. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> might be. <laughs> it's, it's, well, you know, it's impressive how he kept so much crazy people together for so long. It's, it's, uh... <laughs> yeah. And uh, just to have them united for so long. Exactly. Exactly. Without <laughs> this, this, this is, uh, uh, well, I wouldn't be in the Netherlands if that was still the case, you know, that, uh, yeah. so, um, but, uh, less and more, not about the past. It was a beautiful past. Uh, some, some issues there, but shit happens <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> We're all human beings. So we make mistakes. We make mistakes. Shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <you know. laughs> yeah, but. Well, I would say I think there would be really much to learn from that guy. So, yeah, not not the negative things, but uh, there are some. No, no, no. But that... I think I, I think that's that, that's a point taken. You know, uh, it's it's always in retrospect you see how good you had it, even though it was not optimal. Once you have destroyed that what you thought was not optimal and desire something much better, I think. Um, uh, like the East versus the West, when you look at it, of course, the the, the economy was not like flourishing. It was not the best in the world, of course. However, we had time for each other. Uh, I know my parents came from work like one or two or three, right? So they mm -hmm. had the rest of the afternoon for us, for children. You yeah. went to the Adriatic coast. You went to the mountains. You went to the rivers. You had everything. In one. We were mini United States. We had everything in one place. Right, um, yeah, it, it was quite different than yeah. now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And now you have this uh, national entities, and you have the capitalistic Western approach towards economies. But if you really have attention for for yourself and for your neighbors and for the whole community, I don't think so. I think we are we we adopted the individualization. We exchange it for money. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, uh, and probably there was uh, some negative things regarding this also at that time. But you of forget course, that negative course. things and just remember positive. So it might be a bit uh, exaggerated oh, or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps, perhaps it was that. Okay. <laughs> I'm just uh, what, uh, what around 40 million people had the same syndrome. <laughs> I don't know when good, right? That's the one thing they put in the water. <laughs> we don't want to know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Sometimes, sometimes. Darko, it was really a pleasure talking with you. Thank you for the laughs and, and insightful conversation. I have two questions for you. Um, first, uh, okay. I have a question for my last guest for you. 
who is whose name is uh, Kemal Arslantas uh, in translation, the Lion Stone. Uh, his last mm -hmm. name. So Kemal, the Lion Stone has a question for you, and I would like you to ask the question for my following guest. So okay, his guest. Um, uh, sorry, sorry. His question for you is, um, what defined you as a person? What would be the thing that has defined you at most? What did you experience that suddenly said, like, okay, this is who I am and this is what I'm going to be? Oh, okay. This is really insightful one. Hmm. I'd say I, I cannot uh, pinpoint the exact uh, thing that did this, but it was in probably somewhere in my childhood. Just to have, uh, and from my parents, that uh, I should just have fun with what I do and not go after what everybody else is doing and after, let's say, money. So I need to have fun if everything I do, if, if it doesn't look like fun on, or doesn't uh, make me happy anymore, I should just change it. And through the life, I have changed a couple of careers. So yes, this is what I'm going through all the time. I, I hope this was in uh, his mind when he asked me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you the person that you want to be? In terms of that, yes. Yes. Um, yes. I think then his answer yes. has to answer. Thank you very much, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, and now and now of course the tough one. Uh I need a question for my following guest. Okay. I, I this was probably been asked before. I, I think it would. But if you could change uh something today, what would it be? On yourself, personally. Personal. That's uh, that's a really nice one. So that is because I, I'd say we all have things that do we want to change, but we just neglect it and put it uh, for later. Okay, this would be nice to change, but uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe next month, year, or maybe next life. So, well, you know, this is this is an interesting. I, I love to uh, I, I love to listen to uh, call the show on on Spotify the S. As in breaking motivation, I listen to this. Like I don't listen to music, so I listen to, to speeches and etc. And one of the guys that I really love to listen because he very harsh and rigid is David uh, David Goggins, mm -hmm. and he just explained this this thing what you just said like tomorrow and etc. I said a guy reached out to me and he said, "Well, I have a hard time waking up uh, and going to gym," and he wrote him back like, "Yeah, man." You're 24 years old. At that time, I had the same condition. And then I went to research, and I came to a conclusion. I was just being a bitch. <laughs> Very deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's usually the, th the small things you need to change, and and you know already you need to change exactly this small thing. But you make a big fuss out of it. Research what, why, why, so why not? Why <laughs> reasons why not? So, so find a yeah, and, and, and a couple of years later, you come to the same conclusion that you have, you needed to start a couple of years already. Yeah, yeah. On that, what you needed. In most cases, it's just like acting, nothing else. It's just saying yeah. finding excuses not to. Exactly, exactly. It's like not, not, not postponing anything. If you want to do something, not postpone it, just execute it and find out later. Uh, so I think, I think that is the, the biggest charm in life. This, and I think also in, in following your solopreneur career, uh, or, 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 uh, you know, being, being whatever gives you the entrepreneurial skills or being happy at your job or whatnot, it's, executing following up on your desires and dreams which just executing yeah. nothing else not, yeah. nothing less nothing more whether it's your physical shape whether it's your study whether it's you wanted to become a photographer you became a photographer just yeah. you know you could have dreamt and those dreams could have come to your deathbed and say hey we came to die with you because you didn't fulfill us um, yes 
you, you probably need to try things more and uh, more in the terms uh, do first thing later if it doesn't work out okay just try something else it doesn't matter but stop only thinking about that change but it will it will also give you um an edge on that sense that hey i tried it it didn't work but i came to another insight and then and and, and that's one and so on so each time you push yourself to do things you'll come to new insights get a new information uh, recalibrate your algorithm and push forward i think that is the, the the essence of living and having fun as you said yes exactly darko it was really a pleasure wish you an awesome day and awesome week ahead and talk to you soon have a good one thank you for inviting me and a great conversation bye thank you darko